Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Adventure Belt. My name is Kelly. I wasn't gonna do it, but I have to. I am gonna do a full install video of my brand new Ironman 4x4 Foam Cell Pro Stage 2 kit on my 1994 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ80. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. I wasn't gonna do a video on this install because an FJ80 isn't the most common vehicle out there. It is super sought after, but typically dudes that have them already have the lift kits on them. I wasn't gonna do a video, but I'm going to now because there is zero install information out there about the Ironman 4x4 stage anything kits for the FJ80. And there's a lot of things when I was going through opening up the package that uh, kind of caught me off guard. I didn't quite know what some of the parts were. So, and there's a lot of nuance to it as well. Through my research, the most important thing that I found so far is each coil is specific to each corner. There's a front, there's a rear, there's a left and a right. You will have boxes marked T-O-Y-O-1-3-C and T-O-Y-O-1-2-C. The one three cs are the rear and the one two cs are the fronts. Also, within both the front and the rear, there's a driver's side and a passenger side. On the coils, they'll be marked NS, or near side, which is the passenger side. On the other side, there is DS, which is driver's side. And if you look at them, those coils are actually a different length, so make sure you don't mess that up. Now that I've got the entire kit blown apart, organized, and I figured out exactly where everything goes, I'm gonna start tomorrow. I've got the truck up supported on jack stands as high as I could possibly get it to get the most amount of flex out of the front axle. Front tires are off. Uh, the floor jacks are supporting the axle right now, but once I get it kind of where I want it, I will use jack stands to support the axle from that point on. So first step I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to remove both front shocks and I'm gonna remove the front sway bar to give myself the most amount of flex I can again to get those coils out. Eight mil wrench, 19 mil wrench. I got the top bolt of the shock off. Unfortunately, I had to destroy the shock. I had to cut away the top protector part, the plastic part of the shock to expose the rod inside and then grabbed it with a pair of vice grips. I really hope the entire day is not like the very first bolt. I'm gonna remove the sway bar now and I'm gonna remove it in two places because the sway bar uh, extension has to go in here anyway. So I'm gonna remove the main bolt here and this flexes, I'm gonna remove this first and then the two bolts that hold the flex bar to the actual sway bar itself. Six mil Allen and a 19 mil wrench. Now use a 12 mil socket to remove the two bottom bolts to the sway bar. Now the sway bar is free, so let it droop. Remove the two bolts right here, 12 mil wrench. There it is. I've got both coils out, both shocks out. Now we're gonna work on the radius arms. There's a drop and then there's a relocate. So we're gonna do that now. I've got the axle lifted up, level, and on jack stands. This right here is the front radius arm drop box. Now these are definitely side specific and directional specific. This mounts here up into where the frame meets the radius arm. This welded on spacer plate has to go on the inside towards the drivetrain. And you can see here, it's actually lowering it and shifting it forward. And again, I'm working on the passenger side first. So first things first, we're gonna loosen the three very large bolts that hold the radius arm on and then remove the rear bolt. And we're gonna loosen these two bolts first. And it's a 22 mil socket. The back radius arm bolts are 24 mil. Now completely remove the rear arm radius bolt. Now I'm gonna completely remove the two bolts holding on the radius arm to the axle. The kit comes with these threaded nut uh, bars that are gonna go and they're gonna insert into the top of the radius arm bracket. 
We're now looking at the underside of the bracket. These uh, nutted plates that are welded on are gonna go right in and just slide right in. And they're gonna index right over the holes right there. There are side access holes here that allow you to move those nuts around where you want them. So the directions say to have this spacer uh, weld on towards a drivetrain. And if you install it in that orientation, it doesn't want to fit. It gets, it's stuck on that spacer. However, if you orient it so the spacer is on the outside, it fits perfectly. So that's the way we're gonna do it. We just gotta switch them around so this will now be on the driver's side. To install the box, we're gonna be using the brand new M18 bolt and the reinforcement plate. Then on the other side, it's reinforcement plate, flat washer, lock washer, nut. Now we're installing the two M12 bolts with flat washers and lock washers, and they're going underneath to the nuts we inserted in through the top plate. And then torque it down to 48 foot pounds. Now we're gonna reinstall the radius arm and all the hardware is going in hand tight only. All right guys, we're moving right along. We're getting a lot done. Now we're gonna install the five degree caster plates and that's these guys here. What these do is attach to the front part of the radius arm at the axle and they drop it five degrees, which will correct the angle of the caster. Three of the plates have this arcing center part here. One of them has this big sharp cut here. This goes right on the inside of the one closest to the pumpkin. And the reason is due to the pumpkin right here being uh, protruding further down. The plates orient with these uh, cut off, uh, I don't even know, little spacer deals on the inside for both sides. And they orient the double holes are to the front. And you can kind of see what has to happen here. And you can see right here, we have to trim the metal, just the little tip off the edge here to recess for this to line up and get that five degrees. So I've got the front top holes in. Now I'm gonna go put the back holes in to hold it in the exact spot we need it and then mark the cut. When you make your cut line, be very conservative. You can always take it down more with the grinder. So I'm gonna basically just cut it here and then move up on it so that it's a nice tight fit. I've got the front holes mounted and all I'm gonna do is stick my finger in the indexing hole I need in order to mark exactly how much further I have to go. On this one, I'm pretty close. On this one, I'm a little bit further away. I'm just gonna use the grinder to sneak up on this cut line. It's a perfect fit. Now I'm gonna do the other side. I gave the caster plates a nice coat of paint to protect them for a very long time. Plus I didn't really like the way the silver really stuck out. So now they're black like everything else. While that's drying, let's do brake lines. Now the kit comes with three brake line extensions. I've already done two of them. I didn't even realize there was a third one. It was hidden in the box. I had one of my brake lines uh, crack and was seeping. So I ended up changing the two out, the front and back. Didn't realize there's a third one here on the front passenger side. So I'm gonna do that now. I made quite the rookie move. I took the brake line halfway off before I pulled the old one out of the bag and realized it's the wrong brake line. It should have a fitting on each end like this. And this has the wrong fitting on this end here. I'll have to get a hold of Iron Man on Monday to get that worked out because it's Saturday. They're definitely not open. However, we're still waiting for paint to dry. So let's go ahead and do the pan hard bar. This is the pan hard bar right here. This is the bar that runs in front of the pumpkin has the weird bend to it and goes up, attaches to the frame. The pan hard bar is under too much tension. I'm gonna lift up the axle, which hopefully will release it. I'm not quite sure why they have these so they're not on vehicle adjustable. So because only one end rotates, it's not a joint where they can expand you have to actually take it off the vehicle or at least take the one end off in order to adjust it. It's kind of a pain. I only tightened down the panhard bar because I know I'm gonna have to pull it out to adjust it either way. So I basically put it in tight but not torqued. The caster plates are dry-ish, so let's get that installed.
I've been struggling to get this radius plate back on the radius arm and I realized that how can you put five degrees of caster into the angle of the drive line with the other side still attached. So I'm gonna detach the other side now and hopefully be able to spin the axle that five degrees we need to be able to reattach everything. I got the driver's side disconnected. There's two lines here that look like they go through the control arm. They just attach, two bolts, comes right out. I solved the problem. This hole would not line up, the front caster hole would not line up for the life of me. It's just barely off. It's maybe a quarter eighth inch, a little high, and I could not lower it at all. And I figured out why. I had to loosen kind of everything to figure it out. But the axle completely spins freely now. And I found out that the tie rod is impacting on the control arm right here. Right here is the only thing stopping this from articulating a little bit more to get that angle. Apparently this is a common issue. I'm just going to mark I'm gonna mark the control arm right here and I'm just gonna notch it out just a little bit. That amount of clearancing worked perfect. The holes just line up and there's maybe a, I don't know, a 30 seconds of an inch, a couple thousandths of clearance on the tie rod to the control arm. Hopefully that's good enough. I'm gonna give it a light coat of paint and then assemble this whole thing. The drop box and caster plates on the passenger side are in. It looks really great. I started this whole thing around uh, 9.30 a.m., 10 o'clock, and it's now four o'clock, so I'm not making great time, but I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna bust the driver's side and then we'll start installing the coils and the shocks. Now we have to install the coils and the shocks in the front end here, the sway bar drop, and then we're done with the front end. Coils in, you gotta put the two nuts on top. Tighten it up with a 12 mil wrench. For the top mount going to the engine compartment, this is how I'm building it out. Flat washer, rubber bushing, top hat washer, flat washer, rubber bushing, flat washer, nut. And this is going up through the hole. With the help of my lovely wife, I was able to get the top bolt through the engine compartment. Definitely a two man job. And now I'm gonna work on the bottom. I'm gonna go big fat washer, rubber bushing, top hat. I'm gonna let it fall through the hole. Rubber bushing on the bottom, the thin washer, and the nut, and tighten it all up. Now how good does that look? All I've got left on the front end is the sway bar drops. And now just tighten it all down. All I have to do is get it on its tires, get it on the ground, and then I can tighten down the torsion bar, but that's gonna have to all wait because it's 10 o'clock at night and I'm really tired, so. Tomorrow it is. Good morning, guys. The FJ80 is back on the ground on all fours. Wrapped it up really late last night, having a really rough start this morning. But the last step for the front end here is we have to do the three bolts on the caster plate, and then we got to do the two bolts on the radius arm drop box. Let's get into it. These bolts get torqued down to 130 foot pounds. These large top bolts here are a 27 millimeter and I'm using an open-ended crescent wrench on this side because I don't have a tw another 27 millimeter wrench. The front end's all done, everything's all tightened up, looks really good. I had to tighten down the pan hard bar with this guy. Luckily, the width actually looks spot on so I didn't have to adjust it, which was really nice. So I just locked it in and now we're moving to the rear. I've got the rear of the vehicle all set up on floor jacks, jack stands, and the tires are off. 
All I have to do is remove the shocks, coils, and pan hard bar, and then put in the new stuff. Hopefully this goes by a lot quicker than the front end did. Step one is getting moving both shocks, and the shocks I've heard are a pain to get to on the top near the body. The clearances are really tight. Uh, the camera won't be able to show you exactly what I'm doing, but I'll kind of walk you through it. This is the top of the shock, and it looks like there's two bolts that hold the plate that actually hold the shock. It feels like from the top that you can actually undo these two bolts here and this whole plate should drop down so you can access the top of the shock. I'm gonna try that and see how it works. That is awesome. All right, time for these lower bolts. definitely an orientation and a direction for this plate. I need to make sure I put it back in the right way. It's time to get these coils out of here. I'm going to sag the suspension and see if they just pop out. I'm going to go ahead and remove the rear pan hard bar. I think that'll give it more droop and it has to come out anyway because we have a brand new one to put in from Iron Man. 24 mil socket. All right with that out let's see if we can get some more droop out of this thing. I just realized it's actually the sway bar keeping this thing from drooping anymore. I also just realized what these sway bar drops are for. I'm going to remove this plate, which will free up the sway bar. The large bottom bolts are 19 mil. The two top bolts are 12 mil. All right, this should come out now. Out with the old, in with the new. Wow. I've got both coils in, now I'm gonna take up the suspension to take up some of that slop to seat these springs where they need to go and then install the shocks. Here's a little tip when working with the Iron Man Foam Cell Pros. I've noticed when you pull them out of the box, the rod coming out that you stack your bushings and spacers on seems to be very, very short. So what I always do is I take the sleeve off, which will expose the uh, bump stop that's built into the shock this thing is always not pushed down all the way that I've found. So I just hold the rod and just kind of give it a little bit and you can see where it wants to stop right there. It's basically the top of it is flush with the top of the rod. And then I just put this back on. And now you've got a lot more rod to work with. On the plate, one side is notched, so I'm gonna install the outside towards the frame bolt a little bit, and hopefully I'm able to get it on there. All right, that was definitely the easiest way to do it. This was a third try, so put the shock in a little bit, angle it towards the inside, towards the drivetrain, and get this slotted bolt in, because I could not get that in with this bolt already installed. Now that I've got your slotted one in, then you can index this inside bolt, and it's much, much easier. And tighten it all down with a 17 mil socket. It's time to install the new pan hard bar. And I'm putting the adjustable knuckle here at the bottom just for easy to uh, reach in case we have to do it again. Well, apparently it's easier if you put it on the knuckle first and then put the plate on. Tighten the bottom one down here with a 19 mil wrench and you're gonna need a six mil Allen key. Cause this whole thing wants to spin as you're tightening it. All right guys, that's it. That's the full install of the Ironman 4x4's four inch foam cell pro stage two, I think uh, for the FJ80 here behind me. And it came out really, really good, but God, that was a lot of work. Uh, between the radius arm boxes and the caster plates 
It was just very, very time consuming. I would say it took me, obviously with filming, about 17 hours. So you could probably cut that in half for a normal dude in his garage doing it. And I would say that it was about a seven out of 10 difficulty, just with everything going on with all the different components. All right, guys, if you liked that video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. It does help the channel grow. And I'll see you guys next time.